Hello, and welcome to today's webinar titled Assessing the Performance of Mechanical Heart Valve Through Simulation, brought to you by Convergent Science. Thank you for joining us today for this new installment of our webinar series. My name is Scott Davis, and I'm part of the business development team at Convergent Science. I'll be your host for today's event. Our team is looking forward to sharing with you more about Converge and its ability to model fluid flows in complex systems. Convergent Science is a rapidly growing computational fluid dynamics software company. Our flagship product, Converge, is an industry-leading CFD solver used around the globe. Converge features truly autonomous meshing, which eliminates all user meshing time and helps provide fast, accurate, accurate results for our clients. Our speaker today is Dr. Pedram Tazre. Dr. Tazre is currently a senior research engineer at Convergent Science and based in Houston, Texas. He received his PhD from Texas A&M University, where his thesis was focused on enhancing the scale resolved hands turbulence modeling. Dr. Tazray has been with Convergent Science for about three and a half years. Dr. Tazray, thanks for being with us today. We're excited to hear what you have to share. The time is now yours. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar on assessing the performance of a uh, um, mechanical heart valve through simulation. Uh, my name is Pedro Tazre, and I am a senior research engineer at Convergent Science. And before I start the presentation, just a quick note that during today's webinar, if you have any questions, please use the question box and I will answer the, all of the questions at the end. I would like to start with a quick introduction to Converge CFD software and Convergent Science in general. Um, Convergent Science develops and supports um, Converge CFD, which is state-of-the-art CFD software designed for fast predictive multi-physics simulations in um, complex geometries. Um, Converge is used um, uh, by industry, academia, and um, research organizations around the um, world for many applications, including uh, pumps and compressors, wind turbines, gas turbines, and immobility. The company is headquartered in Madison, and we have offices um, in the US, Europe, and Asia. When it comes to running um, realistic um, CFT simulations, um, not only does Converge offer a robust technique for handling complex geometries, um, but also it offers many physical models. Here is a short list of available models um, from FSI simulations addressing non-Newtonian um, behavior of fluid flows um, to optimization tools for the engineering design cycles. So if you have a CFT problem with complicated uh, physics and complex moving geometries, uh, we are here. Um, we are here ready for you and your CFT problem. Just to keep in mind that parallel computing is about performance. And um, this includes more than just the speed, um, but also the size of the problem and the computational efficiency. Um, Converge CFT has shown parallel, um, excellent parallel computing performance for multi-physics simulations. On the right figure, we can um, see how Convert CFD can locally and purposefully um, refine the grid inside uh, the FDA pump. So um, now, now let's um, talk about um, the CFD analysis of a biomedical problem. Uh, we'll start with an introduction to heart valve disease. Then we talk about the computational analysis requirements. Um, and we'll present how Converge CFD is well suited to address those challenges. Um, we'll proceed with uh, discussing the results um, for a model of prosthetic heart valve. And we'll continue with presenting realistic and bio-related um, case studies from intracranial hemodynamics, FDA pump, and deflection of a compliant vessel. And on the right, we uh, can see how Converge can handle an actual heart with complex moving geometry.
Heart valve uh, disease is associated with conditions where heart cannot effectively pump blood throughout the body. Cardiac issues cause the heart to work harder to pump the blood throughout the body. Issues can be blood leakage back into the chamber um, or flow against some narrowed opening. And uh, this can lead to heart failures, even sometimes in cardiac arrest. And, um, that can, you know, even um, lead to death. Um, that's why in the U.S., um, heart disease is the leading um, cause of death. Um, bicuspid aortic valve is a condition where the aortic valve has two leaflets instead of three. Um, it's the most common type of congenital heart disease, and this disease, disease um, often goes unnoticed in the early age. Um, calcific aortic valve is in general a progressive disease. Um, the valve between the lower left heart chamber and the aorta is narrowed and doesn't fully open. In progress, the state's leaflet motions are impaired and it leads to reduced or even uh, blocked blood flow from the heart to the aorta and subsequently to the rest of the body. Um, so in order to help the patient survive, um, surgeries or um, valve implants are needed. Biomechanical factors um, influence the initiation of uh, plaque de deposition, mostly close to locations with higher uh, wall shear stress. And um, function of heart valves, um, either native or Prosthetic can be evaluated um, using in vivo, in vitro, and recently in silica study. Um, in particular, CFD is a powerful tool to complement other approaches. So engineers can take advantage of um, computational simulations to speed up the initial design of implantable heart valves before a prototype is developed. Um, and scientists will be able to conduct efficient parametric studies. Also, much lower number of animal testing is needed for the you know, uh, function evaluation. Um, to conduct a realistic simulation of a uh, heart valve, um, we need to know that it's a multi-physics problem. Um, the surface file for running the, uh, the um, computational simulation must be realistic enough. Um, where, what I mean by that is um, all bands, curvatures, and branches, which can be um, problematic spots, must be included in the analysis. We also need to know if the non-Newtonian behavior of the blood is dominant or not. Um, it has been shown, for example, that for uh, cerebral arteries, non-Newtonian effects can be dominant. Um, similarly, we should know whether the nonlinear behavior of the structure must be considered or not. Um, for the computational analysis, applying realistic boundary conditions is one of the most important steps. For example, sometimes a Winkessel model can be used to consider the compliance of downstream blood vessels, or sometimes this model cannot be suitable because it's just a lumped model anyways. Now let's talk about how Converge is suitable for bio-related applications. In this type of applications, we should deal with um, um, complicated geometries with lots of bends, um, curvatures, tiny gaps, complex motions, um, along with strong transient flow features. Uh, sometimes all of these features should be accurately captured to claim um, our computational analysis is successful. Um, traditionally, these have been roadblocks for engineers, um, but those type of studies are now, um, are now uh, way easier and not challenging anymore with Converge CFD. Converge autonomous meshing capability maintains the mesh quality throughout the simulation. Um, it generates a body-fitted volume mesh using a patented cut cell technique. 
and the resulting volume mesh is body fitted and is an exact representation of the surface geometry. Um, also using adaptive mesh refinement, we can dynamically refine mesh where the physics demands it. Um, for example, for this elastomeric tank, um, we can see how the mesh dynamically adapts to the surface of the diagram, diaphragm, um, and um, changes as it moves. And here we have an interaction between the fluid and solid domains. Now I'm going to talk about um, why we need implicit FSI um, coupling in, um, in, in, in problems where we have the interaction um, between um, fluid and solid domains. It's needed in some cases, not always, but the usual way we do um, coupled FSI simulation is what's called loosely coupled or explicit FSI. Um, so at each time step, we solve the fluid equations and you know um, we get forces. Then we use those forces to move the FSI object. Um, this works well um, when the solid density is much higher than the fluid density, but um, 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 for cases with low density ratios, or even sometimes when the solid is uh, lighter than the fluid, uh, the explicit coupling might fail um, because of numerical instabilities. Um, the dominant instability is often due to um, you know, the effect that's called, uh, caused by um, the pressure-induced force and torque on the body. Um, when a force is applied instantaneous to, uh, to, uh, to a rigid body in, a, um, in an incompressible fluid, the resultant acceleration of the body um, depends on uh, the mass of the body and also the mass of the portion of the surrounding fluid that's accelerated um, due to the object motion, right? If the body is heavy, um, then the instability effect is um, negligible, uh, but for light bodies, it can be significant. Um, that's why we need a tighter coupled uh, FSI approaches or implicit coupling to you know, handle those scenarios. Um, now, consider a rising sphere in a tank of liquid, um, which is um, heavier than sphere by 80% in density. Um, if we do explicit FSI or loosely coupled FSI, um, the case will not be um, uh, stable numerically. Um, just if we take a look at the red lines, uh, we can see um, how unstable this simulation can be. Uh, however, with implicit FSI, we can simulate the case um, very stably, um, which is shown with green lines in the plots. The implicit implementation in Converge uses an iterative approach. Um, at each time step, we pass the information back and forth between the solid and fluid domain until the forces converge. Um, in the converged domain, we input solid displacement, uh, which is obtained from the structure domain. Um, and in the structure domain, we input the fluid forces that we get from um, you know, the solution of piezo and pimple loops. Um, um, under relaxed uh, sub-iterations for um, each time a step is used, and uh, that's coupled with Aitken's um, acceleration technique to speed up the iteration process and also ensure the stability of the um, computation. Um, for uh, a lot of applications, these sub iterations can be really expensive since every computation of the fluid velocity and pressure is required at each iteration. And depending on the FSI feature, a large, a large number of uh, sub-iterations might be required, specifically when the structure is light and has a nonlinear behavior. Um, in the structure domain, uh, not only we can use Converge FSI features, um, uh, we can also use um, Abacus FEA solver 
to you know uh, make a prediction of 3D deformations. Now let's discuss proof of concept of a prosthetic heart valve using converged CFD. According to NSF, uh, there are more than 80,000 heart valve implant surgeries per year, um, you know, to replace faulty heart valves. And any of uh, the four heart valves um, can be surgically replaced. Um, and prosthetic valves are classified as bioprosthetic and mechanical. And the bio bioprosthetic valves are made of um, biological tissues, either from human or animal. And mechanical valves are from non-biological material like titanium. And um, um, here we see different um, um, bioprosthetic and mechanical valves. In general, uh, bioprost uh, bioprosthetic valves uh, are more prone to structural failure than mechanical valves. Um, but um, mechanical valves also, um, ha they have some disadvantages. For example, um, throm uh, thrombus deposition and um, its rupture can lead to embolic complications, which can be a major problem with um, mechanical heart valves. Um, and that's why uh, many patients with uh, these type of implants require long-term anticoagulant therapy. Um, also, the clicking sound, uh, which is just normal, might be annoying to some patients. So, uh, in this slide, we are um, seeing a model of bileaflet mechanical uh, aortic valve. Uh, the surface geometry is shown. Um, at um, op uh, open and um, you know closed states, um, it's a uh, designed benchmark case in literature to model um, a simplified mechanical heart valve in a scaled system, and we simulate the interaction um, of a modeled bileaflet mechanical heart valve and a pulsating fluid. Um, for this case study, um, aortic vo uh, wall is assumed to have no deformation. The solid leaflets have one DOF or one degree of freedom, and they are free to rotate around the hinge. Um, also, as we discussed earlier, the added mass effect would be significant um, for this case because the density ratio is a small, um, I mean, uh, leaflet density is way less than the uh, fluid density. Um, we also assume that leaflets are homogeneous. And to limit the leaflet rotation, mean and max angles are set. So no solid-solid contact model is used to add to the numer numerical artifacts. <clears throat> Um, the same as the reference work, the fluid is Newtonian and the flow is incompressible. Um, initial state is at rest for both uh, flow and structure. It's a pressure-driven flow with a representative um, cardiac cycle pressure. So the pressure at the inlet is set as a function of time and the outlet pressure is fixed. Um, the absolute of the minimum pressure is said to be larger than the maximum pressure to mimic a typical cardiac cycle. So in this figure, um, the rotation angle as a function of density is uh, presented. Um, it clearly shows how stable the simulation is regardless of the density ratio and the motion profile is not sensitive to um, the density ratio. And here implicit coupling shows accurate and a stable motion profile for the FSI object. Um, the results here um, show that there is, uh, the, the plot on the right shows that the results are grid converged. Um, we tried um, different base grid sizes, uh, 30, 60, 120 millimeters, and we have tried different variations of uh, embed level and AMR settings. 
Um, we can observe um, a Wiggles a P4 resting at two extreme angles. It's because in the reference paper, the extremes of rotation are controlled by um, you know, repulsive torques and uh, damping terms um, to avoid uh, you know, any sudden perturbations that might lead to numerical instability. Uh, but in our solver, the computation is quite stable simply by setting the min and max angles. Wall shear stress is one of the main um, causes of valvular diseases. Um, high wall shear stress spots are more prone to accumulation of platelets. And as mentioned earlier, it might undergo rupture and result in embolic you know, complications. Um, it can be seen in this figure that the tip of leaflets undergo a high shear stress. And this contour is helpful with you know, predicting the critical spots in terms of thrombus formation. Um, here the flow field is visualized. Um, um, if you take a close look at the animation on the left and also the middle animation, you can see the formation of recirculation zones near the tip of um, leaflets. Um, and that can be the result of change of sign of the prescribed pressure. Um, and on the right animation, we are showing how mesh is generated fully automatically. And that can save a lot of time and uh, the approach can be very systematic. Also, animations of contour of velocity magnitude um, um, confirm leaflet tip uh, leakage, which causes a high velocity regurgitation. Um, in a realistic case, these are the problematic spots, um, again, in terms of thrombus formation. Um, also, flow blockage is indicated by quasi-stagnant flow on the face of leaflets. Now let's uh, talk about more realistic biomedical case studies. Um, um, now that we have gained confidence in the FSI technique and convert CFD, we take one step forward and include aortic root geometry in a real mechanical aortic valve simulation. Um, here we are showing the flow field uh, during diastole. Um, it's again pulsating pressure driven flow. Um, the adaptive mesh refinement is velocity-based and the vacuous the structures um, and their interaction with the valve surface can be uh, seen. Uh, the quantitative comparison against experimental data still needs to be completed. In the next study, we um, um, study um, the intracranial aneurysm. Um, we know that brain aneurysms are so important clinically and can put the patient at a high risk. Um, in this study, we try to non-invasively predict the gross and rupture risk of aneurysms by monitoring the wall shear stress for a patient-specific geometry. Um, as we have already discussed in these geometries, traditional way of mesh generation is so challenging due to irregular and complex shape of aneurysms. Um, we have two surface models here, a patient model and healthy model, um, where we have removed the bulge shape from it. Um, a series of studies have been conducted in terms of near wall treatment, turbulence model, non-Newtonian effects, and um, you know, get a great convergence studies. Um, here, the critical points in terms of wall shear stress are clearly visible um, under, uh, on the wall shear stress contour plot. Um, the critical spots are around the corners and uh, locations with sharp curvatures. Um, in the lines uh, at, the, at the bottom, uh, on the line, uh, in the line plots, uh, we can see the time history of wall shear stress and peak values. Uh, that are validated for one cardiac cycles. In another case a study, we are showing results for um, an FDA blood pump. 
Um, FDA's benchmark case provides experimental data for CFD validation. Um, in this study, converged CFD is used to uh, study the pump performance and flow characteristics. Um, the pump performance is within 10% of the test data for different values of RPM. Um, here we show the velocity contour in a cut plane of the upper blade um, um, for condition with um, 6 liter per minute and 3500 RPM. And in the diffuser, we can see a massive recirculation zone, um, which can be, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it all depends on the flow condition. Um, to the velocity distribution at the center line and across the diffuser comparable with the PIV data. Um, and it's worth noting that the location and magnitude of the peak velocity is um, correctly predicted. In the next case a study, we use the membrane model in converged CFD to study the wave propagation in a compliant vessel. Um, here we have a pipe um, where the initial field is uh, completely at rest. Um, upon applying a pressure gradient at the inlet, we see how um, wall evolves in the downstream direction. And as the pressure passes, it induces formation over the membrane until it reaches outlet. Um, we have done this study both with, uh, with converged membrane model and abacus coupling approaches. Um, so as the plot on the right shows, uh, there is a reasonable agreement between experimental data and computational results. Um, for the abacus coupling, the fluid domain is solved in converged CFD. Then we transfer forces to abacus um, where the deformation is calculated. Then the deformation is uh, you know, transferred back to converge. Um, remember that the density ratio is one. So uh, this has to be done in a tightly coupled manner, um, which, uh, in, which, which is going to be implicit um, in order to ensure the uh, stability of computations. Um, depending on the convergence criteria, we can have um, multiple iterations per time step um, till convergence um, of the forces. With that, uh, I would like to uh, conclude my talk with uh, re recapping some notes. Um, um, with Converge CFD software, it's no more difficult to set up a moving case than a stationary case. Um, in Converge, um, autonomous meshing strategy adjusts the grid to accommodate the motion of the object. Also in Converge, we have the option to couple multi-physics um, together. I mean, we can couple FSI with multi-phase simulations and um, um, with other physics as well. And um, we have shown that implicit FSI coupling implementation can handle uh, challenging uh, fluid to solid density ratios. And also we have the option to include the nonlinear, uh, non-Newtonian non behavior of uh, blood flow. Thank you so much, Pedram. You did a wonderful job today. Um, it was uh, very insightful and you gave a lot of uh, valuable information. Thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, we'd like to invite you to reach out to us if you have any questions using the Q QR code contact us and a representative can be in contact with you to answer questions and give you more information about Converge CFD. If you're interested in receiving our newsletter, you can use the newsletter QR code and we can uh, make sure that that's sent to you in your inbox. We would also like to invite you to our webinar, June 21st, uh, Improve Engine After Treatment System Performance with CFD. So this will be our next webinar in our series of webinars. Thanks everyone for joining. We look forward to seeing you next time.